Ah, yes, hello, dears. Thank you for the entertainment. <laughs> so this wasn't about sounding perfect. This was about you starting to utilize your voice. For you to notice, how do you all feel right now? Is your body buzzing? You brought new energy, new life into your body. Simply by breathing, for one. But then also by utilizing sound, you are vibrating your own matter. All right, so if you've got issues and you start utilizing this tone and sound, imagine what you can generate. You can clear it. You can get it to vibrate so intensely that you can see it. Sometimes you can't see it because it's not vibrating that much. You've got an issue that's been dormant for a while and it's just laying there, slowly vibrating. And then as you recreate the vibration in the now, you strike that tone in the now, it starts to vibrate and everywhere else it starts to increase, the volume gets a bit louder and all of a sudden you feel all this emotion. All right? That's what you're doing through vibration and that's what you're doing with the tone and sound. You're activating yourself. So just play around with it. And again, notice as you're making all the different tones, as you're making all the different notes, all the different vowels, where is it resonating? Is it resonating in your skull? Is it resonating in your heart center? Is it resonating in your chest cavity? So just play around with it. And there's, there's no right or wrong here. It's a process. And let your intuition guide you about where you, where you need to go. We will tell you that each and every one of you in this room has experience of working with tone and sound. It's not new for any of you. So all you're doing is, is going back and accessing the records of how it's done. And when you get yourself heart centered, it's readily available to you. It's not that you've got to go and learn something from the beginning. The natural way of learning in the universe is very organic. If you haven't had an experience, you go to the library and you get the book on how it's done. There are energetic libraries. You are the paperback version of the library. Mother Earth is, if you want to think of it, she's the main branch. Uh, she's, uh, excuse us, the, the uh, your local branch. And then the sun is the main branch. And then all of the information of the solar system is stored in the sun herself. So everything that happens in all of the planets and all of the systems, all the planets in the solar system, that's all stored in Helios, your sun. And then the information from all of the suns, all the stars in this galaxy, all that information gets sent to Alcyon, which is the central sun in the Pleiadian star system. If you want to think of it as your library of Congress, that's what it is. But you have access to all those same records that, that exist within the library of Congress, as it were, but most of those records you've archived. It's like you have zipped the file, as it were, so it's all compressed, all that data is compressed. So you can open it up at any time, or you can just go to the library, you can project yourself there. doesn't matter. It's the same. It's just, what are you interested in doing? Sometimes you like to go meet your friends in the library, so you go to the library. So, we want to talk a bit here about sacred geometry and turn and sound, but before we get there, we want to see what questions you have. What do you want to know more about? Um, how do you compact the vibrations in order to make uh, the metallic shapes? Well, you're not really compacting the vibration. If anything, most of what you are doing in this dimension is unpacking. <laughs> Because the information is coming through and it's encoded with so much stuff, there's so much information in there that you're unpacking it. When we work with you, think of it this way, we will say the words, it's a nice day. What you get at the energetic level and that you process through your heart center is that it's a nice day, it's 70 degrees, there's a light breeze, the birds are chirping, there's a scent of rose in the air, and you hear children laughing nearby. So there's all this data and information. All the brain gets is, it's a nice day. But the rest of you gets all of this other information. So in many ways, it's not so much that you're compressing it, but rather you are unpacking it to bring it to your conscious awareness. Now when you work with the platonic solids, or when you work with uh, spheres, you can create a different flow of energy different shapes are going to create different effects. So if you visualize in your mind's eye a sphere, and then you set the intent 
about what it is you want to create and you project a tone into the image. All right, so you've created an image of a circle. It doesn't even have to be a real image. It doesn't really have to be a circle because your intent to create and project sound into a circle is just as potent as if you were doing it in the physical realm because the physical realm isn't really real. Your reality isn't really real. It's not really solid. It is an illusion. So whether you do it in the mind or whether you do it in the physical world, it doesn't matter. The effect is the same because you are shaping vibration. Uh, you shape it by projecting it and then it is bounced off of this figure. So when you start with a sphere, it allows you to see all sides to an issue, as it were. It allows you to feel connected. It allows you to complete cycles. It allows you to be connected to the whole. These are the things that get accomplished when you work with the vibration of the sphere. It is oneness. All right, so if that's your intent to be oneness, then you're going to work with the sphere. If you want to work with focusing energy to, if you want to project energy somewhere, if you want to project it to another person, if you want to project it to another part of the galaxy, you're going to work with a pyramid. All right? Envision a pyramid. If you want to think of the Great Pyramid, it is the ultimate conductor of energy. And guess what? There were all kinds of rituals done with tone and sound within the pyramid because it is a conduit. All right? And the stone, the particular stone that was used is a wonderful conduit for the sound. The way that the rooms are shaped within there allow for frequencies to bounce off in particular ways to create different patterns of energy to support and then project out of the actual pyramid. The pyramid is aligned with both the systems of Sirius and Orion. The different rooms, the different chambers are aligned with different star systems and it was utilized to communicate with those star systems. To amplify intent, to amplify communication, to literally uh, project one's essence out of one's body to go have um, an experience of bilocation so that you could be in two places at once. Because the frequency was getting lower at that time, you know, 10,000 years ago was a lot lower than 100,000. All right, remember we started talking about the Lemurians and their ability to remember who and what they were. They were Lyrans who came to this planet and lowered their frequency. They could bilocate all the time before they became dense. When you get to Atlantis, you were getting more and more ingrained in the physical body and you forgot how to manipulate it. There were some who remembered and that was passed along the mystery schools and all, all of that kind of thing. But the pyramid was shaped to bilocate. You can still do that using tone and sound. You can project yourself forward using tone and sound in the image of a pyramid. Now, <laughs> I do want to say this, uh, that bilocation, while it sounds pretty wonderful, it's normal. You may all strive to say, oh, I want to bilocate. How fabulous would that be? It's something that other parts of you do all the time. The unique thing is to be in one focused place. That is unique in nature, all right? To have a limited linear perspective, that's pretty unique. In all the other dimensions, you're constantly bilocating and projecting yourself in other places. That's the nature of the universe. It's normal. That's how things normally go. So it's unique and special to be here in this dimension. So we don't want you to to forget that and appreciate what it is you are experiencing as you get excited about trying to develop some of these new abilities. When you work with the square, all right, you are setting up boundaries. It allows you to shape energy, to create division, all right, to create, in a sense, separation, which again is unique to this dimension. Uh, in other dimensions, you don't really have the same perception of separation. You know that you're connected. You know that if you think you're separate, that it's simply an illusion and you can break that down in, in, in a breath. It's much harder here, isn't it? So when you work with a square, it can help you to set up um, structure for yourself. If you are someone who has a difficult time uh, creating boundaries as far as picking up other people's emotions, you can visualize yourself in a box, as it were and start to create the tones and sounds. 
if you are somebody who has a hard time thinking outside of the box, imagine yourself in a box, start creating tone and sound, and as you create these tones and sounds, they're knocking down the walls. They're falling over. So you can use the, to the tone that way. Again, you play around. Now, if you want to start playing with some of your friends, that's when it really gets interesting. When you say, let's play with tone and sound and see what happens. Remember, you're holographic in nature. So what happens to the microcosm happens to the macrocosm. So if you want to connect as a whole, you want to connect to oneness, how are you going to stand as a group? Probably in a circle. Yes, you're going to sit in a big old circle. If you want to create structure, stability, equality, you're going to stand in a square, provided there's enough of you to do that. All right? If you want to create balance, with, with a pyramid, with a three-sided pyramid, it is the divine trinity. It is a way for you to connect with source energy. All right, again, you're projecting yourself. You can project yourself all the way up to uh, Christ consciousness. You, or you can project yourself all the way up beyond Christ consciousness up to source energy. All right? So if, you stand, if you've got three friends, you can stand in the triangle. All right? Again, remember to set your intent. What is it that you want to create? What do you want to achieve when you start to tone? And just play around with it. Have fun. We'll tell you this, that it is a lot easier for you to learn how tone and sound really affects your body, how it feels when you're working in a group because it's amplified. And you're also getting feedback from other people about what they're experiencing. And you may not have consciously been aware of that and somebody says, oh, I was feeling you know, kind of this way. And you say, oh, you know what, so was I. I didn't really process that until you just said it now. So it's a really good way to get confirmation. There's a lot of power in group energy. Uh, there is far more that can be accomplished by the group than by an individual. As you start combining in numbers, it's exponential, the power that you create together. So if you have an opportunity, start playing around with your friends. But we want, as we said, we want to make sure that we're answering your own questions. So what do you want to know about? What do you need um, clarification on? Okay, one thing that... I know there are at least a few people here who are channeling sounds at present. I channel a diversity of them. I'm trying to figure out what they are, what the best use is for them in my healing and in other ways. And I was wondering, for those people here who do channel, if you could quickly, like those who want to project their sound, if you could comment on those sounds, where they came from, what they're useful for, and so on. We'll give you a broad answer, and then yes, if, if, if you want to ask where, where the sounds are oriented, we'll be happy to tell you. Um, what, what you're working with in those unknown languages are, is the language of light. Different sectors of the galaxy have different dialects based on their own experiences, just as we were talking about earlier with different cultures here. Their own frequencies, their own filters, if you will, things that they're working on, the dimensional filters as well as uh, their experiential filters. All of that colors, uh, the dialect. So you'll have a Syrian version of the language of light, an Orion version, an Arcturan version. Um, and while we're talking about the Arcturans, for those of you who want to work with tone and sound, uh, we might suggest that you call on some Arcturans for some assistance because they are, as we would describe them, the ambassadors of sound. They work with tone and sound, they are masters at working with tone and sound, and they utilize it to work with different star systems. Uh, when star systems are having some disputes, and it's not going so well, they are almost the arbitrator, where they come in and they utilize the universal language of light and they start communicating ideas because they are not holding judgment within their own frequencies. The beings that they're working with can hear them. If you had two people who had a conflict talking to each other, neither one's going to hear the other. All right, But if you've got a neutral party who's in there, they say, oh, all right, well, yes, this sounds good, or mm, not so much. But 
they're working with the universal language of light. Even outside of this dimension, this is going on. This, this tool is being utilized. And some of you are starting to bring in the language of light more and more because it is so rich with information. It's encoded with all kinds of information. And because you don't understand with the human mind what it means, you don't understand the combination of vowels with consonants, you're not processing it through the third dimensional filter. There's only one place for you to process that and that's through the heart center. So more of you are bringing this through so that you can get expanded information in, an, in a relatively untainted way because it's not having to p pass through the filter of the mind. When you start working with the language of light, it literally in the higher dimensions looks like light. By the time you get down here, because of how you all communicate, although you're doing it telepathically, you all think you're doing it verbally. So when you want to communicate with someone else, you think I have to verbalize it. It has to be sound. And the language of light gets translated into a version of sound into tone so that it can, you can continue working on these, on these different levels. You will see some of it written. You will see some script. And again, uh, there is tremendous power in symbols. You can't process it, it through the, the logical mind. You're having to process it through the heart center. And it looks foreign. But when you look at it, you can feel very activated. You can feel peaceful. You can feel like you're given whole concepts through the script. Um, if you've never seen it, if we were to say to you, imagine an elfin language written out, that's what it would look like. Very soft, very flowing. You can all identify with that, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. When you see the language of light, most of it looks very gentle because it is a very loving energy. And it sounds that way when you listen to it. It has lovely, gentle, lyrical sounds. It's not harsh because the information and the vibration in it is infused with love, especially beings who are imparting it. They want to give you love. They want to give you support. And the language of light is infused with that intent. So it can be quite potent. Uh, is there something you'd like for us to check in? Okay, I'll, I'll give a few, but I want to make sure that other people will get opportunities if they want to also vocalize. Yeah, do one. So, take note of how you all felt. Could you feel it? Could you feel it in a particular area of your body? I would say right now, it's in my skull, probably. As you're generating the sound, now on the receiving end, we can tell you where our channel felt it. It opened up her third eye. It opened it even further. That's where she was feeling it and being activated because it's going straight in. It's information that is encoded. And uh, if we had to translate it for you, <laughs> we are the keepers of light and frequency. We are here to support you. It's just one of many beings um, the keepers of light and frequency, keepers of codes, or also some of the beings who work with the language of light. Um, they're present, they're here, they're assisting many of you, especially those of you who are um, working with these languages. It's the Arcturans and the keepers of frequency. They're different levels, they're different dimensions, and they have different agendas. All right, so they, they work in completely different ways, but they work with a very similar tool. All right. Was that one that I just did from a particular star system? Those, that was from the Keepers of Frequency, and they don't align with a star system. They are above that level of incarnation. Um, they are, we would say they are 11th dimensional beings, the ones that you're working with. They're not incarnating to a planet. They're kind of overseeing, along with many beings in the 12th dimension, who are holding frequencies for the universe. Guess what they're, they're holding the frequency with? Sound. Mm -hmm. They're generating frequency as you would interpret it by sound. 
Yeah. By the way, what would... That would definitely be light language. Yes, Thank yes. You. So while we're talking about this and, and sound, many of you um, hear ringing in your ears. Yes. All right. What's happening and what's causing the ringing in your ears is that you're not allowing the energy to flow all the way through your body. It's getting stuck up here in the top, and so it's just vibrating in your skull, and it, you're getting a constant ring. If you relax and allow the energy to flow all the way through your body and use your visualization to do that, to literally see it as music or light, to see it coming in and moving and passing all the way through your body. Here's another visual for you. There are planets in other systems which, if you touch the air, you hear sound and you see color. So if you can imagine what that would be like, you're constantly playing a tune as you are moving through your environment. You're constantly creating a song. The same thing happens here for you, except you are so unaware, you are so numb to the sound that's being generated. It's outside of what your body can pick up, but you are generating sound as you're walking, as you're moving, through just the air. What you pick up is the sound of the grass underneath your feet, all right? the sound of, of your clothes rush, rustling against your body. But there is also a sound as you move along and as you interact with nature, you create a beautiful symphony. But you all are also separate right now, you're not hearing any of it. And this is also part of what you will start to access again as you increase your vibration as you start to shift into the higher realms you're going to remember your connection with other things and you're going to start to be able to hear it and feel it and see it I hear a sound that sounds like a silver bell from a distance and it's always in my right ear and I hear it that's <laughs> I hear it in other places yes that's your guides oh. I'm trying to get your attention yes. <laughs> <That's obscene. laughs> Well, it's not jarring. They're not, you know, screaming at you, which, uh, you know, guides have all different kinds of personalities. You've got some that are very soft and gentle, and then you've got some that are very uh, aggressive. So yours are being quite kind with ringing a bell. So when you, when you hear it, stop. Try to open up your entire energetic field. You can get yourself heart-centered, put yourself into that space where you feel happy, and listen. Say, what do you want me to know? What would you like for me to hear? All right, so they're just I'm trying like, to get your attention. I'm really clumsy when things happen to me. I don't think about speaking or doing anything. I'm stunned by it. Well, you'll get more and more comfortable with it, and you'll be more conscious of it going on. And you'll recognize, yes. ah, that's not just my imagination, something that I'm hearing in the background. And you can take the time then to check in. That's the whole point, yeah. that they're and trying to give yeah. you... <laughs> Little wake up call. This humming sound that comes from other. The humming sound. Now, there are different humming sounds that can occur. It sounds like. Yes, there are different things that you can hear, and it depends on what frequencies you're blocking out, and that's why they can sound different. Most of the time, it sounds like ringing when you're resisting it. Now, there is also a general sound of spheres. When you tap into source energy, remember we were talking about the celestial realms and how they had their own tone to them? When you start to tap into the higher realms, you're going to hear that. You're going to know instantly what it is. It's not that you, you have this annoying thing going on and you don't know what it is. But you can tap into those frequencies. When I hear this is constant for a couple of days, it's almost like there are two wheels spinning and they're just barely touching and it's kind of a humming, but it's a, uh, very hard to describe. Yeah, so sounds, whenever you're experiencing that, just check in. So what is this? What what am I supposed to recognize? Ask your guides for help. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, well, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> the point is that the more you ignore it, the more intense it's going to become until you, you pay attention. And, and it's yes. <laughs> we operate the same way. You know, you operate the same way when you create your reality, when you create a situation which you are uh, not addressing, you know, you're generating fear, but you're not addressing it, you're not integrating the fear, the next time it gets bigger, it gets more intense until you create a big accident and you can't ignore it. 
that's how you set it up for yourself, and we work the same way with you. Can you work with animals and sound? Yes. Animals are very, very sensitive to sound, especially because most of them, their hearing is far more uh, advanced than your own. Their range of hearing is, is far greater. Uh, so you most certainly can work with anim animals, and they're very responsive to it. If you want to do healing work on animals with tone and sound, they will respond very, very well to it. So we would encourage you to play around with that. It's very potent I was sound. Wondering um, now, I have this globs of mucus dripping down into my throat, and my throat is like irritated, feeling I'm. I'm not sure if there's something I'm trying to put some sort of blockage. Or You're releasing. Releasing something. You're releasing because you know your body, your cells have been holding on to all that stuff. And so as we start to move the energy, as we start to work with you, as you start to tone, the cells say, all right, well, we've got a new vibration here, so we can match that vibration. And literally, they let go of what they've been holding on to. And uh, you know, if you've got sinus stuff going on, it all starts to drain. And do, um, I hear these sounds that are like, and I can't, I'm not sure if they're songs, I'm not sure if I'm imagining it, I'm hearing songs, or I'm taking pieces of music and I'm putting it together into what I hear to be songs, or this is actual channeling, and this is what I was wondering. It's a little bit of both, uh, that you are... Uh taking frequencies and memories of information and you're, you're trying to bring it through to yourself so you're channeling your higher self yes. all right um, so it's a little bit of both it's a little bit of you and you channeling you and creating new frequencies within your body that you're trying to get information to you your higher conscious is trying to get get you into a new vibration by giving you this information and again uh, when it does seem like your imagination, it's because you're working through your heart center, which is the closest thing to your imagination you've got. But the more you work with it, the more you're going to be able to feel that it feels slightly different. It feels different than your daydreams or what you imagine as, or what you feel or sense as your imagination. It does feel different. There is another energy present. Another way for you to think about it, and as we say, it's like uh, when you first hear someone walking down the hall, you hear their footsteps and you have no idea who it is. And then by the third or fourth time, you can distinguish exactly who it is because you recognize the gait, you recognize the sound, the pace, uh, and their energy as it comes closer to you. But when you first start, you have no idea who it is. And it's the same thing. You know whether it's your higher consciousness, you know whether it's your guides, uh, or uh, maybe somebody new, and then you've got to ask, who is this? Could it be energies from uh, past life? Yes, some of your lifetimes are actually aware of their multidimensional existence, and they're here working with you. Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we can, we do want to want to talk here for just one more second about other aspects of self and working with them. You can ask to work with another version of you that has the information that you're seeking. Remember its intent. Basically what you're doing is going into the library and accessing the records of that lifetime. What do I need to remember? Now, most of the past lifetimes or future lifetimes that you're accessing, you're doing so because there may be a skill that you want to pull through or there is a vibration in the now that you're trying to integrate. See how we segue here. Um, <laughs> we uh, There's something that you want to integrate. And uh, sometimes it doesn't seem fair because you know, you're doing the integration for lifetimes when they didn't do it for themselves. And you think, here I am doing all the hard work. But you're the lifetime that's going to benefit from it because you're going to have the highest vibrating field that you can in order to go through the ascension process. So you can just deal with the vibrations in the now and as a result of that oftentimes you'll have flashes of memories of other lifetimes but you don't have to know all the details you also leave your body at night and you work with other aspects of yourself 
You work with celestial friends who you ask to remind you of things. And some of them are in other dimensions. They know that they're multidimensional. They know that you've had lifetimes together and that part of you is down on earth. So they work with you. Uh, often other ETs, some of them who have physical form, are working with you because you are part of the collective and you have information that they are seeking. You're teaching them. All right? But you can, yes, you can ask and you can set that intent. And some of them have all kinds of information on how to work with tone and sand. So one of the things we would recommend before you go to sleep is to ask to connect with that other aspect of you which has the information that you're seeking. How to work with tone and sand. And ask to remember when you wake up in the morning, the information that you were given. All right. Now, as far as integration goes, it, it, it's the name of the game. That's what you're here for. Integration is letting go of all judgment. It's for you to see that you are living in a dimension of duality, where you've got light, dark, positive, negative, male, female. You cannot have one without the other. That's the basic construct of the game. Light and dark are both part of source energy. It's an illusion. The dark is just the absence of light. It's the furthest extreme of light. And what you're doing here is letting go of all of the judgments that the light is right or that the dark is wrong and seeing that they are both part of divine source energy. How do you do that? One of the ways is to look and see what programs are running. You can work with tone and sound and they can start to pop up. All right, sit down and run the tones and, sat and the notes all up and down your chakras. Visualize the colors as you go, as we were talking about earlier. That's one method. Another method of working with your belief systems is to ask yourself, allow your subconscious to tell you my most negative thought that creates this is or uh, the reason I've created the situation for myself is and fill in the blank. Now when you first start you're going to say I don't know because it's a block. But after about half a dozen times something's going to pop up. You're going to get an image of something and that will tell you what the belief system is and sometimes you know you've all got it wired in very complex ways and It may not make logical sense because the majority of that vibration or the intensity of that vibration may be in another lifetime for which you have no conscious memory just yet. And it may be a rather minor thing going on in the now. But the fact is it's still in the now so you can deal with it in the now. See how it applies to this life, that belief system. Where do you apply it in this life? And you can start working with the polar opposite. Start working with tone and sound to shift the vibration. It's all about energy and shifting vibration. You're just making energetic vibrational selections and altering energy. That's all a belief is. It's a frequency, a mental frequency that you project again and again and again until it becomes habit and then it runs at the subconscious level because you just let it go on autopilot while you're dealing with other stuff. And then you want to clear it, you want to raise your vibration, so you go back and you look at the habits and the beliefs that, is, that, are, that are resonating at a lower frequency so you can increase yours. You want, to, you want to neutralize the charge. Now, we did mention about creating tones and sounds that create interference patterns. So if you've got a low vibration and you're going to envision the wave of the frequency, what you do is you're putting out or pulsing out a frequency which is going to nullify it. It's going to knock it right out. Most of the time that is, if you want to think of affirmations that you're doing, that's what the affirmation does. It neutralizes it. Sometimes you work through entrainment so that you are pulsing out that higher thought form. All right, I am loved and appreciated. I work for the benefit of all. You know, you're putting out those good thoughts. So anything unlike it starts to raise and increase itself in vibration all right, through the laws of entrainment until it starts to match that frequency. So you don't always have to know all the ins and outs. There are ways of getting around it without all the detail. The details are stuff that the third dimensional mind doesn't need to know because the rest of you has got it covered. Your higher self has got it covered. So does that help you with integration? You're very welcome. And you know, this is that's the whole game. 
This was a game of integration. It was a game of dissension and reascension, as we said. Uh, you get it, you're getting lots of information, but part of what you're not quite getting at the moment, because we think in part because other beings think it would be a bit overwhelming, is for you to see the much bigger game, that Earth was a grand experiment. And it has genetic material from thousands of worlds upon it and a huge range of emotion and frequency that you experience here. And it is unlike that on any other planet in the entire universe. And as you all go through this process of integration, you are going to change the entire universe because you're holographic. And as you learn how to integrate, that information is getting sent to every corner of the universe and it's impossible for the game not to change. You're hearing that this is the end of a grand cycle for Earth, yes. But more than that, it's the end of a game. And so you create a new one. That's it, that's, that's experience, that's what we all do. We play games all day long. You just have forgotten that you're playing one. You think it's real. <laughs> it's really an illusion. All right? I have a question. Yes. Um, are there specific tones for certain diseases or emotional yes. balances? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if there were or if it depends on the person you're working with. No, each disease has its own frequency, usually because it's rooted in the same fear. Uh -huh. All right? So, you know, somebody who's got cancer is hanging on to anger. Now, there are slight variations on that. There can be anger about different things and a combination of a couple of frequencies there. But usually it's a very, very similar frequency. And so, as we said, when you get somebody who's really proficient at, at listening and hearing and distinguishing what's going on in somebody's voice, they can tell you what illnesses you're probably carrying in your body because of what you're missing. That's how you work with herbs. And you know what herbs do what, um, what curing because of the vibration that they carry. They put in what's missing, all right? Or they work through entrainment. They're putting in a higher vibration so that the cells can increase their frequency. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. It's all about frequency. And one aspect of that is tone and sound. Did I have the best life? That's an overlay. And most of you, um, you know, when there's big lifetimes, they're, they're overlays. Um, they're overlays. Is there anybody, we're getting to the very end here, is there anybody who has a burning question who hasn't been able to ask one? No? I have another question. Yes. It's a personal question. Um, if no one else has. Um, I play the crystal bowls. And lots of times, I'll get up in the morning before I do anything else. I'm just like propelled to go to the bowls, and some some musical tone comes out. And now I don't know if I'm channeling it or if they're telling me that, that they want me to play it <laughs> because I need something, or if it's just for my entertainment. Uh, no, it's not for your entertainment. Although you can be <laughs> amused by it. Uh, what it's doing, it's setting a tone for you, literally. When you know you're talking about setting a tone. You're setting a vibration, you're setting a, a frequency for yourself. And when you've been out of your body at night, um, it's really important that you ground yourself in your body first thing in the morning. Part of what you're doing um, by utilizing the crystal ball is locking information into your vehicle. All right, Information that you've been pulling in and working on while you've been sleeping, it is a way for you to lock it in so that when you go and you work with that tone again, it reactivates that information. It expands the information, just like we were talking about the crystal. And you use the tone to expand the crystal, mm -hmm. to put information in it, you do the same thing. You're expanding your auric field, you're grounding the information in, and when you strike that ball later on in the day, it expands your field again and you can access that information. It sends memory. So uh, there is purpose to it. There is information. Now, if you want more information, we would suggest that you start asking your guides before you go to sleep, that they explain the process and that you get to remember it in the morning. Um, because we can tell you some things, but we want to empower all of you to start trusting yourselves, to know that you can ask for help. It's really important that you start asking 
You are divine source energy. You are creator beings. And in order to make the shift in vibration, you got to declare yourself as such. If you really want to start working with matter, and you really want to start working with tone and sound, you have to see yourself as a creator being. You are part of source energy. You are not something that was just separate that started all the way down at the bottom of the third dimension and having to work your way up the ladder. You're already source. And parts of you are off in the 10th dimension, the 8th dimension, the 5th, all over the place. The third you just chose because it was an interesting game and you hadn't had that experience. And it is, we will tell you, the most challenging dimension to be in. And you are on the most challenging planet in the most challenging dimension to be in. You're the most challenging part. <laughs> exactly. And so you are the true masters down here on the planet. And you are going to teach the rest of us how to integrate. Duality exists in all dimensions. But the higher you go in dimension, the uh, less extreme the poles are. As we like to say, in our dimension, it's the difference between gray and light gray. And down here, you've got black and white and 5,000 shades in between. So you're teaching the rest of us, if you can do it in this density, then it's much easier for the rest of us to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank you for your service and all that you're teaching us. It's not that we're up here and we have all the answers. You have the answers within you. You have the ability to access the information at any given time. You can hold 12 dimensions of consciousness within your body. You can select which one you want to hold. Now, you're probably not going to hold a 12th dimensional consciousness for an extended period of time because if you do that, then you're changing your vehicle because your vehicle's got to match your energetic state. So you can't have a dense vehicle and maintain a 12th dimensional body. If you are holding 12th dimensional consciousness and you're inhabiting a third dimensional body, any of the frequencies that are not vibrating at a 12th dimensional rate get activated through entrainment. And they get projected into the world. And this is how you all go through the process of integration and projection. You start projecting anything that isn't of the highest vibration when you start holding more and more love. Do you all understand this? Mm -hmm. Say that again, could you? Yes. So love and fear can't both exist at the same time. They can't be operating at the same time. Uh, so the more love that you have, the more the fear gets activated so that that vibration can be released or that it can be elevated to match that of love. All right. So when you're down and you're focused on fear, you're not open to love. So you've got to choose one or the other. And as you choose more joy and as you choose more love, uh, more aliveness, more love, the more you hold yourself in that resonance, the more your fears get activated. Some of you think that oftentimes um, you get activated and you think, you know, I wasn't really holding any negative thoughts. How did I manifest that? Well, you did it because you were holding more light in your body. And so those lower frequencies couldn't exist in there. And you can use tone and sound to help process them, all right, to make the process easier for you. So play around, all of you. Have fun with it. There's no right or wrong here. There's no right or wrong way for you to achieve this goal. And as far as healing goes, there are more and more modalities that are becoming available to you each and every day. And what was effective yesterday may not be effective tomorrow. So you've got to listen to yourselves about what you think is right and effective for you. We can give you suggestions, but we can't tell you how it feels in your own body. Remember, we can't hold that third dimensional perspective for you unless we're channeling. We're not in physical form, so we don't know what it really feels like. So you're the ones who are going to have to discern what's effective and what isn't. So what you're going to do is take different bits and pieces from all these healing modalities. So perhaps if you're someone who usually uses Reiki, now you can play around with Reiki and tone at the same time. If you're someone who uh, uses tapping, now you can work with tapping and tone. You can play around with all of these things. It's not that something's got to be just pure. That's the old way of being. It's the old way of ritual. It's the old way of control. And now you're pulling in information from all places and taking the bits and pieces that work. 
So play around with your voice, have fun with it. We're around, dear ones. You can call us at any time if you're having difficulties and trying to figure out what to do next as far as playing around with tone and sound. We'll be happy to whisper in your ear. If you hear a bell, guess what? <laughs> Take note. And we're trying to get your attention. Um, but we're here to be of service. So feel free to ask us if you need confirmation, if you're not certain what we've given you, ask for confirmation and we'll give it to you until you get it or you no longer want it. So until then, dear ones, we are watching, we are listening, and we're waiting and sending much love. <laughs>